Hi and welcome to a new episode of Integrated Awakenings and today we are talking about the elemental energy of air and for this episode I would really like to emphasize this as a sword-like quality meaning piercing meaning cutting meaning it is dividing things into smaller bits and it hurts a little you don't like it a little it's a little metal it hurts you know the the truth hurts the the truth is uh, i don't want to look at it right and the untold truth or the ugly truth or uncomfortable truths that you don't pills that you don't want to swallow right that's the marketing that we have around truth we don't have the belly for it and thus we don't have the capacity to be sword eaters or sword wielders now the thing is backtrack the tarot now if you ever noticed modern day living you would see how biased we are with logical mind-based thinking a lot of fact-based stuff a lot of stem grads a lot of rational thought and that's why a lot of people also have anxiety or have a lot of painful thoughts because we ask people to think about things and people's emotional bodies people's spiritual bodies their capacity to listen or just not think was not developed you were told to think so <laughs> of course the other way was not as developed and now you're like you have like overdeveloped right hand and then your left hand is like weak and you look unbalanced so imagine like a bodybuilder and their whole right arm your their right hand capacity of logical thinking is so strong and then the other side weak as hell so this is why i want to offer you that the handle of your little sword yeah that handle that is silence that is the capacity to not hold the blade the capacity to resheath your kitchen knife you put it in that wooden block and not use it yeah to stop your thoughts literally turn off your thoughts some people think that this is impossible it's not it's really not um some yogis have texts of doing this but also you're probably judging the guy who has no thoughts as dumb where in fact they just have a deeper relationship to silence and relaxation yeah so when you have a lot of spinning thoughts i really want you to cut the idea that that's somehow cool that's somehow productive that's somehow productive I- i'm gonna tell you something straight that's stupid <laughs> that's not true yeah so i want you to gather all those thoughts park it in a box or even turn them off get your dagger and then resheath it in your spine so all of that wind around your mind really drag it to the center of your spine and then sit there in silence listen to deeper intelligence speak humble yourself that you don't know everything cuz the thing is in the same way that an ecosystem is constantly communicating to each other the divine life capital life is constantly trying to talk to you right the thing is you've never stopped your mind such that you think that it's somehow magical to hear that yeah but even your dog knows when earthquakes are going to happen yeah moms have like an intuitive hit of something is wrong yeah we are connected this is this is i don't need to put logical proof in your face this is existence <laughs> And the thing is if you don't feel this way it means that you're messed up somewhere you're numbed somewhere you're doing something that's making you float upwards up here instead of resting in that reality i want you to rest in that quality because other than it is true and that it is comforting is that it is just smarter thing that's the smarter thing to do yeah just sit there rest in what is actually capital true cuz the thing is when people feel like kites and they're like thinking like this you know it's like all over the place yeah you're not seated you're not sheathed 
yeah you you're like a wobbly dagger and the handle is not installed i need you to install that thing i need you to seat yourself yeah I could even, so for example, I will count you down to a 10 and I'm going to offer you an energy of just sitting into that intelligence of life and that spine energy, yeah? So just try it out. It's just 10 seconds. So one, two, dropping into the very, very center of your spine, like really bright white cords gathering powerfully into each other three four five almost like a harp string singing true singing into its true nature four five six seven eight almost like you're digging into into yourself yeah like an onion that is unblemished in the center nine ten and then just sit there Sit there. Can you can you listen to this podcast or do whatever task you're doing with this kind of listening slash emptiness? Yeah? Because you can be this clean all the time. You can have this kind of ease all the time. Anything that says that you can't, bullshit. That's the thing. The path of the mental, nanas, uh air-like quality if you're gunning for your sword's path it's all about calling bullshit when you have thoughts thank you for showing up what is the bullshit underneath yeah because the thing is when i had like a lot of psychic awakenings like okay third eye uh throat or even just the first one the heart one i would see subtitles on people and how, like, literal yellow subtitles of, uh, of what they actually mean. They will say something and they actually mean something else. I would see thought patterns on people as clouds. Like, your thoughts are floating around your head like clouds, like comic books. And the reason why I can clear spaces or I could sense whatever your patterns are is because it's all over your body. Your thoughts and emotions occupy actual space. You just don't see them because you ha- you're not open to that dimension of reality yet. But they exist. They occupy space. Yeah. And the thing is, we need to gut them at their root. These little thought critters. These little vampiric suckers. You gut them at the root and then you kill them. This is why it's a sword. This is why it's a little edgy. This is why it's a little metal. Yeah? Because I know that some people might approach their healing in a very watery way. So we're doing water in the next episode. And that's valid. Why? Because in the same way that a wheel can have multiple spokes. So for example, four spokes. It's more balanced, right? Even a tricycle, a bicycle is a little bit hard easier to maneuver than a unicycle yeah and the thing is if you're in a path to awakening to truth to you know enlightenment right if you check yogic texts nanas is what they so nanas is g-n-a and a-s yeah and this is when you just use purely mental faculties to get all the way to the top of you know the hill of enlightenment and the thing is The people who can achieve this, you need to have a really, really smart brain. Like your intellect needs to be super sharp because you're going to question everything. You're going to question literally anything and everything if it is true until you get to the core of existence. And the thing is, not everybody can do that. It's valid, but not everybody can do that. And the thing is, we're going to need other elements yeah, other spokes on your wheel, other wheels on your truck, so that you get further and in a way that might fit your body type slash energy type better. Yeah, so a lot of people, they're getting a lot of tools around, say, water. But they're missing, maybe, maybe they're missing a little bit of 
inquiry, a little bit of dialectic battle, meaning swords. This is why I didn't talk about this of like mental, air, exploration, studies. No, this is the swords. This is when you cut to the truth of things. Yeah. So the thing is, the people we lie to the most is ourselves. You, you have to live with yourself. Sorry to inform you. <laughs> so all those shitty thoughts that you feel like are shitty simply because you per- feel them and it sits with you as shitty, right? That is fully your responsibility. And you need, kind of need to cal cal that dig a little and get to the core of it and really gut that root out. Yeah? So in my sessions, uh, if you're ready for this kind of work, so after I do some inner child stuff, I gut the mental emotional constructs that fuck you up the most. Because in yogic systems, mental emotionals are kind of tied together. So swords and water is tied together. It's kind of like a bamboo. So bamboo juice is the emotions. The bamboo shoot is the metal, is the sword, is the mental aspect. Yeah, so they're very... This is why when you see... Uh, aura images, they say mental, emotional, body. Because they're tied quite... Uh, like, they're weaved together quite tightly. Yeah? So this is why their work comes hand in hand. And I feel like the process of gutting it out is quite mental. It's quite... It's a realization that makes you go, hold up, this is horrible, and then you cut it. Yeah? And a lot of people are scared of the realization because they're again lying to themselves so for example um i don't think i can do this for example that's a quote that's like a thought right i don't and then what if you explore that thought of like okay what if you lived with the i don't think i can do this times 100 over 24 hours in a day and say let's say six months what would be the repercussions of, I don't think I can do this? What are the real consequences of you entertaining that thought? And I don't, I don't want you to wuss out and be a pussy around the whole, mm, if, you know, you know, maybe I do it and then I don't do it sometimes. No, 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 no. Go all the way. Go all the way. You can't do it. Right? How does, how does that feel? And if you actually really, really digest and absorb the truth of your consequences and see if you really want to go that way, then you can make a decision. Yeah? You need to look at the consequences fully and then you'll make the decision. I'll talk about this more when we get to the water episode. But the thing is, you need to... Finish your emotions to the end. You need to go all the way. So if you have this thought form, let it run its course. Let it have its light of day. Like go, like for example, five minutes. I'm pissed. I hate this guy. Go ape shit for five minutes, right? Go ape shit for five minutes. What are the consequences of this? Do I want this in my space? Make a decision. Yeah. So, so in polarity dynamics. Air quality is quite masculine. It's quite decisive. It is a finisher. So the thing is, while the emotions, this feminine exploratory quality is buoyed and is unfurling, it is the swords that is going to cut it. It is the realization. It's the, oh shit, this thought form is going to fuck me up that is actually going to kill it. Yeah? And the thing is, that is up to you. (laughs) Yeah, I'm, I'm giving you the gate and giving you the opportunity and giving you the metaphor. But pick what are the three, four, five, six things, thoughts that eat your energy up and list them down. Yeah. Decide if you want to kill them. Yeah. No, really. I'm not telling you to kill them. I'm telling you that you have the opportunity to and that this is the important work of your sword aspect if you so choose because your mind is with you 
Yeah, and your mind needs to get instructions. And these are like a set of instructions that set you free should you choose to do them. Yeah. Now, the crazy thing about it is that the more comfortable you feel with having and looking at ugly things about yourself, yeah, about ownership, about the paradoxical ownership of, mm, mm, I got a bad side to me too. Or like, I got this dark side in me too. The more that you don't give a shit about other people's shit. What do I mean by this? Your shit is your shit. Their shit is their shit. My business is my business. Their business is their business. Yeah? Because the thing is, a lot of our bullshit about other people is just blame, shame, guilt that we've exported outside if we settled into the truth of our own ownership of our lives we will actually import all of that all of that shame all of that guilt and say that's on me actually no i can do something about that like they were just a useful mirror thank you for showing that to me but i was actually talking about me right you're getting all of that projection, all of that juice that you're blaming on other people. So for example, my job, shit, they're doing shitty things to me. I'm like, no, I'm participating in a job where they, I allow them to treat me like shit. It's always a tango, yo. It's always two. It takes two to tango. So anything that you're saying that people are doing to you, you're halfway doing it too. Yeah? And the thing is, the more you own up to this truth, all of your truths, all of it, just all of it, the more free you will feel and the more free other people will feel around you because you don't need them to control. You don't need them to be in a specific manner, in a controlled manner for you to be happy or for you to be at peace. They could be angry. They could do dumb shit. They could have opinions about world news. They could be livid they could talk shit about you and you could be completely unaffected and people might say oh that's not human that's not true yo there are yogic books about how the emotional body becomes free when it's untethered and it is unaffected and you know and it's like self-sustaining yo it exists okay (laughs) it exists it exists when you become independent enough sovereign enough that you really don't think of, you really don't mind other people's thoughts because they're essentially talking to themselves when they're projecting on you. Yeah? Yeah, so there's that spaciousness. And in the same way that you give them permission to be all of themselves, you give yourself permission to be all of you. So this is a little bit shadowy, there's a little bit of shadow work, a little bit of a paradox too. That as you absolutely love someone's light, you also love absolutely their darkness. Meaning, you are so free to be beautiful, but you're also so free to be evil. And I know that, for example, you're in a creative, you know, um, path and you're like creating like a healing community and you're, you're having boundaries and stuff. Yo, that's valid. That's valid. It's like, oh, these are my rules in terms of my jurisdiction, of like my community, right? But the thing is, they have the free will to do that. Yeah. They, they have the right to. Okay. Yeah. I know that, for example, if you're an officer, if you're a judge, you, it's your job to make judgment, right? But if it isn't, then you are just expending too much energy at the thing that's not really yours. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like when we have a hard time loving the people around us, when we complain about the people around us, what we're actually complaining about is that there are things that I cannot accept and I am not empowered enough and centered enough to handle. Yeah. So this is, um, let me put an asterisk on this. If this is abusive and stuff and you're not in your power, that's fucked up. I mean do something about it you can't just quote unquote accept it but if what's grating about you is that your mother-in-law is just annoying 
I would like you to consider that you're having a bit of an issue of what is acceptable and what is not. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people twist spiritual concepts to what is convenient to them, healing concepts, boundaries to what is convenient to them instead of really, really tackling and investigating what is actually true. Again, we lie to ourselves most often. Yeah, so the thing is, I'm not even there to... You don't need some psychic or slash yogic person to be calling you out of how much you're bullshitting yourself. The eternal you is receiving all of your lives, <laughs> all of your lies fully. You know, the, the toxins are 24-7. So this is a you thing. This is a you thing. This, this integrity, the this sovereignty, this ownership of your own truth, this is a you thing. All the benefits you, all the action you. That's why the sword is like a single blade. I didn't say it's a sickle or it's like a two-blade sickle. No, it's one sword. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. And the last thing I do want to say about the quality of air and this air path energy is that there is a point of time when sounds become spontaneous. So for example, me... Uh, I wrote down Satnam before I even understood what Satnam meant. There is an intelligence behind the mantra that just rang true for me. In the same way that Om, or some like yogis, I wouldn't even call them yogis. Some spontaneously enlightened people will chant mantras they've never read before. Or they just hear slash see it in the, you know, air and they're like, oh, dang, it's just a download, right? So that's the thing. Uh, I also kind of hear people's original music when I meditate, really. Like, I see you as music. Um, so the thing is, and also when I read books, I can feel the motivations of the writer if it's coming from their heart or if they're, like, shitting themselves. And the thing is, this is not even that special. I bet, like, really intuitive woman would have the same experience of, oh, this text is lying to you. You know, like, everybody has that tap to that undercurrent so what i'm saying is that when we live as truth yeah and we have that sovereignty and loyalty to our own truth we're going to have an easier way navigating our lives because one you could sort out through all of people's bullshit and your bullshit quite cleanly quite efficiently with so much more energy because you're not spinning around the bullshit circles, right? And two, you're able to build things that last longer because you're not building them on quicksand. Yeah? So this is all I'm going to offer you for this episode. If you liked it, if you're interested in sessions where I channel the thought forms and help you like delete them that's great it's kind of like programming it's like a ram wipe for your brain um you could do that but i also share these podcast podcast episodes because i fully believe that people when they're ready will just spontaneously do these things by themselves yeah (laughs) yeah yeah so i want you to feel fully licensed to do this yourself as well and Yeah, that's all I got, and ciao, see you next week.